Episode 35, I wanted to get real cool, man, so I brought one of the coolest motherfuckers I know on. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Robert Paul Taylor. What's good, How brother? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Good, good to, to have you. you on, man. Thanks for having me. Good seeing you, brother. Thanks for having me. Good to see you, too. Man, you live such an interesting life, bro, and I love, like, uh, <clears throat> people's stories, bro, and just kind of, like, seeing how their road paved out and ended up being what it is, bro. And I feel like you're, you're the kind of person that goes on... A bunch of journeys with yourself to like self discovery, you know what I mean? I do. I do. What's been going on with you, brother? You've been staying busy? I know I, you've been traveling. I, I've been staying busy. It's been a good summer. Um I just recently I've been doing a bunch of yoga. That's my new trip. Oh dude, me too. It's I, a bitch, I, man. It's a lot harder than people think. Like I love it. I love it. I go I go eight AM every day. I know shit. Five days a week. I only do it like four times a month. Yeah, I've been doing it like uh, cause I'm I, when I like something I do it over and yeah. over and over. What kind? Again. What kind of yoga do you do? Like uh, I think vinyasa it's, I think it's hatha vinyasa. Yeah, okay, I go cool. to uh, Wanderlust. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, right. did, you, you tried Bikram? I, d- I did Bikram. It's intense. I like because I, I do Native American sweat lodge. Oh, dude, we were just talking about it yesterday with my guest yesterday, bro. It's fucking funny. Yeah, man. so I do sweat lodge. So I'm cool. cool to try it. I'm good with the heat. I I did sweat lodge Monday night. Um, Where would you do it at? I go to this fireplace in Oxnard. Mm. It's pretty. It's about an hour drive from Hollywood. Yeah. It's Monday nights. Uh, it's a Lakota, uh, Lakota prayer, uh, fireplace. Mm-hmm. So they sing Lakota songs, and the lodge is about an hour. You know, the whole ceremony is a couple hours. You how go, hot do you think it gets in there? I don't know how hot it actually gets. Probably like 120, 140 yeah. maybe. It's like a sauna. Yeah, it's totally different. People always they go, "Oh, you're going to sweat lodge?" Oh, yeah, I do Bikram, or I go to sauna. It's not. It's different. It's a you're, spiritual experience, right? It totally is. But in a sauna, you're like chilling after the gym. There's your nice muscles are recovering. Air. Or whatever. In the sweat lodge, you're you're literally you're like you're on your fucking hands and knees Ooh, with your face off, in right? the dirt, Keep going. And, and someone's beating a drum, and there's big ass stones, and they're pouring water on them. It's totally spiritual, totally indigenous, but it's how long have you been doing those? Ten years. Oh shit. Yeah. Oh, that's tight. Damn. Yeah, ten years. So I like the heat. So uh, I like the heat too because I used to. But but sometimes like, see, I fucked up my first class. I because there's sixty minute, uh, the the yoga classes right the 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 Bikram, but there's a ninety minute too, and I fucked up and I signed up for a ninety minute and I'm, I had coffee that day, which I've had too much today, and like you know how like you can't really have any stimulants in you that are gonna like alter yoga's your heartbeat. Intense. It's intense. It's I like fucked up slow... three minutes in. I was like, oh. It's a slow, <laughs> deep cardio. It's like it's funny because I was in class today. And you're not doing something that crazy intense, but like I go into down dog and I'm beads of yeah. sweat are falling off me, and my body is the temperature. You're just cooking. Yeah, but I love it, dude. It's I, I what I love about it is that it's humbling. It never gets easier because the better you get, the like you know the harder you can take you your positions. Yourself. And it's like damn, I. I I'm addicted to it, like on a level where it's just like, man, like, all right, I'm like, I'm getting pretty good at this shit, you know what yeah. I mean? But it's it's intense. The whole another, it's a whole another beast. Um, so yeah, man, you've been working this stuff too, right? Yeah, uh, you just I, wrapped on a movie. I saw. I did. Um, the movie we shot actually uh, at the end of it's the movie's been almost a year. Um, oh, nice. So you guys are like at the distribution stage now. Uh, you're talking about five piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah that's supposed to. The director Matthew Roth, he's they're trying to find we're trying to find a festival home for it right now. Yeah, um, he really wants to get in Sundance and and That's or TIFF or obviously somewhere, um, somewhere that has you know some good juice to it. Yeah, but that movie's is done. It's in the can. Definitely looking for distribution home. I haven't seen it yet. It hasn't premiered yet. Damn. Um, but that's the next one that's coming out. That's tight, man. You played a drummer in it. Yeah, I play a heavy metal drummer. Dude, that um, was my life. I was. I, that's what I did for. Years, bro. I was a heavy. I was yeah, playing a heavy metal I band. I was a drummer. Good. Yeah, man. That's crazy. How? What, what, so, what's your character like in it, man? Uh, this guy's name is Brandon, and um, he he was a drummer his whole life. Uh, his father is this famous uh, jazz musician, and he was. It, it's kind of a serious movie, actually. He was severely abused as a kid. Oh, dang! And he developed uh, dissociative identity disorder. It's a good topic right now. Yeah, perfect topic. So right now. we used to call it uh, multiple personality disorder. Yeah. But apparently that's that's not PC anymore. 
where it's kind of derogatory. <laughs> Everything so fucking changes too. Like you yeah, know. so what I've I learned a lot. You know, uh, multiple personality disorder is derogatory, so it's called dissociative oh, identity okay, disorder. So they can't associate which personality is theirs. I think people in just sense. in the in the press and the media I and mean, in movies, people they call them with with DID, they get offended because people. Th- are calling him multiple personalities. Yeah. You're like, it's um, just me, dude. What the fuck? Yeah. And so I, um, I, I tripped out on a couple books, you know, the director had me read a few books about it. Um, and anyway, the character, Brandon, he, he has DID. He had five altars living inside of him. Ooh. He's this badass drummer who was in a band. They kicked him out. The band made it, got signed. He was in another band. They Ooh. kicked him out. He Ooh. was basically this badass drummer who, who couldn't deal um, in, with in, in all a that band pressure, with the yeah. crew because he would be a control freak and fuck it all up. Yeah. So, so the movie up. opens up, excuse me, with him and his new band. They're about to go to this massive competition, like a battle of the bands. Yeah. And Dennis. whoever wins gets a million dollar record deal, um, yeah. you know, with, with a huge label. Yeah. And so the movie, he kind of unravels over the weekend. And that journey to get to that yeah. competition. Yeah. Yeah, and so there's kind of a twist because there's there's four other people in the band. The movie's called Five Piece. Um, when I first read the script, at the end of the script, I asked, I was like, is 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 the bandmates are they real? Because at the end of the movie, uh, I see what you're saying. You, he's by himself, and you're sort of like, wait, were those people in his head? Is it like a Fight Club twist? Like you don't yeah. really, I'm not even really sure yet. Yeah, because if, you haven't seen it. If the <laughs> band members are real. Or those were his, you know... Hey, man, it sounds um, cool, though. His alters. Regardless but, of which direction they go in. Yeah, it was really fun. We shot it about eight months ago. And, nice. Uh, yeah, that should be coming out soon. I saw that, man. I was looking at that. I was like, that's, that's pretty cool, dude. Uh, and you, is it? Am I tripping? Or do you usually take a trip, like, after a project? I, I've been traveling to, to Asia um, for about a month a year for the past four or five years now. Nice. I'm trying to get my family on board with that. Yeah, it's tough. And... <laughs> Uh, I'm like, what? You want me to go to Asia? Yeah. What the fuck are you going to Thailand? I, 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 yeah, I, use, I try to go to Thailand for the end of December to January. It's pretty cheap, right? It's totally cheap once you get there, yeah. I mean, it's, it, it, you know, if you're an idiot and you just go online to kayak, you can spend 1200 bucks. If you yeah. know how to dig a little bit and find the You'll deal, there's a secret I learned a few years ago about traveling. Only buy plane tickets. This is for the West Coast. Yeah. Monday night, Tuesday night, from midnight to 3 a.m. And it's, for some weird reason, in that window, from midnight to 3 a.m. on Monday and Tuesday nights, the prices are 25% cheaper. Really? So like, let's say I'm going to Puerto Vallarta next week. Yeah. So that's, that's like 350. Yeah. It's LA. It's cheap. But if you buy it on a Monday night, it'll be like 269 or a Tuesday night. And then the next day, it'll jump back did you, up. Did you figure that out by just fucking digging at I that have time? A bu- <laughs> I, you know, I've had just a bunch of thrifty... I, I got another friend of mine who's... He's not cheap, but we, we, <laughs> we fuck with each other. He's frugal. He's frugal. <laughs> and we call each other international price reduction specialists. <laughs> like, and I'll so, figure this shit out. Yeah, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll be with him, my buddy Morris. We'll go out to Thai food and stuff. And he'll check. He's also a CPA, so he's good with numbers. But oh, he'll, yeah. he'll check the receipt. He'll yeah. be like, I didn't order extra sauce. 75 cents. What's this charge? I'll be like, damn, OT. It's a, it's uh, 75 yeah, cents. Yeah, you call her out. But yeah, yeah. we... we <laughs> Somebody along the lines t- told me to you know buy tickets on Monday or Tuesday night, but it's true if if you try it out and you check it. Interesting. Oh, that's some Monday, valuable Tuesday knowledge nights. for y'all. Shit, you're already getting. So your once money's you do worth. that, you can get over there for six to eight hundred bucks. Damn, that's not bad at all. Yeah, and then once you're there, it's uh, totally cheap. I mean, Bangkok is a thriving city. You know, they got Ferraris and Lambos and skyscrapers yeah. and yeah. millionaires. But, but people were so tripped out because I feel like. They want to keep people scared of traveling and keep people in their comfort zones. With, Very American. With the media. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? And very, but it's like, shit, the world is so beautiful. They just, it's scare tactics. Like, oh, this shit's going 100%, bad. This shit's going 100%. bad. Because like you see, like my, my family's from El Salvador and all they talk about is like MS-13 and all this crazy shit. And it's like, that's one of the hottest surf spots. You go to the beach or there's a bunch of white boys being like, dude, we're fucking hitting waves. You know, and it's just completely different than what the public perception is going to be. Sure. But it's tight, man. And, and do you do you do it like frugally out there too? Because that's how I would do it. If I'm gonna be for their month, you know, I'm the type. Like I'm local. kind of a gypsy. Uh, yeah, like, no shit. I'm totally. <laughs> I I can I can chill. Yes, the answer is yes. <laughs> yeah. I go. To, I get a bungalow right on like the sickest fucking beach you've ever seen. Dope. I get like a bungalow the size of this room hmm. on the beach. Fifteen bucks. That's all you need. Twenty bucks a night. Damn. 
then food's like a dollar, <laughs> a meal. You get a you get a moped for like four or five bucks a day. Dude, you're our covered. massage is eight to ten bucks an hour. Man, and, I spend more than that in L.A. Living just regular life. Yeah, I go to about a month a year, and I spend. I usually give myself like a hundred bucks a day budget, yeah. which is what I tell myself. Okay, I have a hundred bucks. I yeah. get two or three G's for a month, and I usually come in closer to fifty or sixty a day. Yeah, because and that's like eating nonstop, massage every day, moped, cruising around. It up. Then there's one or two days where oh, you want to get some jewelry or you buy a couple clothes, but other than that, there's days that go by when you're just chilling on an island. You're not spending much money. Is that your favorite spot to go, Thailand? So far, I've been to uh, 26 countries. God damn. Well traveled. Yeah, I lived in Paris. I lived in Germany. I've spent four months in Thailand. Um, I stayed in, in, in Madrid in Spain yeah. for a few months one summer. I lived in, in the south of France for a summer. Um, I love Paris. I love Greece. I want to go to Greece. I want to. Oh, my my girl's bomb. been bugging me to go. She's like, "Let's go." Greece She's is like, the bomb. Greece is cheap. Santorini too. or whatever. Santorini is the bomb. But you got to go like off season. I hear because like during right season. now it seems that everybody's in Greece. It's yeah. like everybody I've seen online is for in Greece. real. Everybody's Instagram. I'm like shit. Totally. In Greece? Greece is cheap. Greece is really beautiful. Yeah, you fly into Athens or or you can um, boat in from Brindisi, which is the tail end of Italy, and um, then you get on these big old Titanic boats. Yeah. You take a night boat, and you you know you fall asleep on the boat. You wake up, and there's just island every four hours. Island hopping. Damn. You go to Eos, to Pathos, to Patras, to Mykonos, to Crete, to. But how hot? Like, is the language barrier real hard to get over? Uh, Greek is like impossible. Yeah. <laughs> totally. <laughs> like, That's why like, they say it's all Greek to me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's literally it's like Roman. Le- I mean, I don't know. Asians. How do you get by? You just figure it out. Time language. You know the most annoying thing about. It's funny because we haven't. We almost start talking about Americanism, but everybody, most of the world speaks multiple languages, except for except Americans. for Americans. Yeah. So most kids, especially millennials, in other countries are speaking English as well. Yeah. You know. It's tough here, man. Like I speak two languages fluently, but most people say oh, I speak two languages, but they don't speak like fluent Spanish. Like a lot of people here know Spanglish. Right. You know what I mean? They're That's not, me. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like people, so they're like, yeah, I speak it fluently. It's like, fluent, fluent. Can you translate the, the shit you're saying right no. now directly? I could like, order burritos, talk to a chick need. for a few by. minutes, <laughs> buy drugs, find a taxi. Yeah. The essentials. Yeah. The essentials. But that's it. You that's know. been a journey for you too, right? Sobriety, you're straight edge. Yeah, you know, I, I don't say straight edge anymore because I, I had my 40th birthday last year. True straight edge is no drugs, no promiscuous sex no tobacco anything oh shit and that's um, a lot that's intense yeah it, it is and um i've had years of straight edge for sure yeah. but I, I was i spent my 40th i went to tulum last summer oh beautiful place with my lady at the time it's a little more expensive tulum's definitely is trendier now it's yeah. kind of like abbott kenny yeah it's good <laughs> yeah, i love abbott kenny though they got the abbott kenny coffee. is dope Best coffee. Yeah, but if I'm going to go to third world country, That's I true. want four tacos for a yeah. dollar. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't want $12 like Chardonnays and my girls are lush. Yeah. You know, and she's getting four or five glasses of wine at dinner. But, yeah. Um, I, was at, I was at Tulum. It was my 40th. I got 10 years sober. And I was like, can I have a fucking cigarette already? Like, yeah. come on. It's get off my years. fucking back. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's and not I, bad. And I I, it, it's not. And so I told my girl, I was like, babe, I'm going to have a fucking cigarette. I don't want to talk to you. You're drinking a fucking, you know, Mickey's right yeah. now. And I'm not saying shit, but it's bugging me. But it, we're on vacation. And so I went and I bought a pack of Rollies. So I've been I've been smoking one or two Rollies at nighttime. That's not bad at all, though. It's not. But technically, for that reason, I don't say edge. I'm straight edge. Yeah. Because I do smoke a cigarette or two a night Yeah. that I like. You don't try pot? No, no. I've been 100% clean for, for over 10 years. Yeah. yeah I used good. to I used to smoke pot all day, every day, love, on the I freeway, sleeping, at work, <laughs> church, court. It enhances everything. Anywhere. Dude, yeah. I was in court once and dealing with that shit, and I accidentally ate an edible the night before. I mean, accidentally. I ate an edible the night before. I just didn't think it would last this long. And it was like a serious court day. Like It was serious. Like They were defi- deciding my faith. And I'm out there, and I'm like waiting to talk my to my lawyer or whatever and I'm sitting outside and I'm like holy shit I'm fucking high off this yeah. edible still cause you know you eat when sure. once it's in your system it's in your system no, I like, spent my entire 20s high <laughs> I mean I guess that's, that's that's the era you're supposed to have it in right but I mean uh, so yeah so that's kinda cool man you got, uh, 
What's been? What else has been going on, man? I know you've been. I know you've been working. You've been writing a lot, right? Um. Yeah. So, uh, we did South. Did you come to the premiere? Oh, what? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At I the Crest. To, yeah. South Thirty Two. I wrote. Uh, oh, you were, oh, yeah, that's right. I co-wrote right. that with my writing partner Jake Barsha. It was a, yeah, dude. I loved your character the best. He's just like eating donuts and shouldn't put Yeah, yeah. Which <laughs> is uh, very real. We produced that and I co-starred in it. That that came out. Um, and then we have, and then I shot. Five, then I went to Thailand for a month, mm. right after South Thirty Two. Then I came right back home and I went right to set on Five Piece. That's why I was thinking. I was like, does this dude just go to Thailand right after he finishes no, the project? No, South Thirty Two. Just the production got pushed back uh. and it literally ended like December eighth. Yeah. And my flight was December 10th. It worked out perfectly. It worked out for me. My producing partner was pissed off because once we locked yeah. picture, I was like, peace, dog. I'm out. I'm going to Thailand. Like, what am I supposed to do? Edit it. I don't know. Yeah, I'll figure so it out. So <laughs> he spent most of the, the winter in the editing bay with our editor, Terry Kelly. But um, So when I came home, it was like picture locked and there was still some posts to do. But So you skipped the stress, stressful, stressful shit. <laughs> That's not really my, my bag. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel you. You know like, what I mean? Put the experts to that it. Part, you know? Yeah, totally. Uh, so I came back, shot five piece, um, and then I traveled again. I went back to Thailand in February. Um, right before I left, I did Fresh Off the Boat. Oh, uh, nice. I uh, did an episode on that. On uh, Is it still on? I think it's ABC. Yeah, it's ABC. Is it ABC? Yeah. Yeah, Fresh Off the so. Boat's killing it. Yeah. yeah, they're going into season four. It's like the first Asian It's about to hit show. syndication, so they're no about shit. to like... You know, they say... Said. The first year you stay in your apartment, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, Second yeah. year you get a new car. <laughs> yeah, it's not till the third or fourth season that you. Buy then you're a house. good. Yeah, buy yeah. a hell of a house. Get so I, I, don't go crazy, but get I yourself a house. I think they're going into season four or five, nice. so they're about to all get houses. And the kids are totally rich, but yeah, that's um, shit. So man. I did fresh off the boat in December. Then I went to Asia for three weeks. Uh, what Asia? I went to to the, to Bangkok. I went to northern Thailand. So I like what I do is I fly into Bangkok. Thai food's my favorite, by the way. I eat that shit all the time, and I shouldn't. Why? It's good. I mean, because it's super carby, like super. Yeah, it is. I'll eat it's like weird though when you time. go to Asia and you like. That's such a trip because if you eat tons of rice here, you like you feel bloated. You're it's different over there for sure. Over there, all the food is grown within like a fifty mile radius. Yeah, because they don't have the means to transport the and shit any farther. It's just it's good food from the earth. Yeah, and for some reason, most countries I feel like all those Asian the US, people, dude, they're all skinny. Yeah, I mean, the There's Korean no War, fat people anywhere. The Korean War, they were talking about how these dudes were kicking the, uh, uh, sorry, not the Korean, yeah, the uh, Vietnam War. Sorry, not Korean War. Uh, the Vietnam War, the, the soldiers were talking about all the time, like how the fuck are these dudes whipping our asses eating a bowl of rice a day? Right. You know what I mean? Like one, and I'm like, I don't know, maybe the atmosphere is different. I don't well, I right. went to Vietnam, and I went to the Ho Chi Minh trails. Oh, and no I, I did a, a a Vietnam War tour, and I saw all the booby traps that the Viet Cong had made, and they fucked us up, bro. Yeah, for sure. My 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 uh, godfather, rest in peace. He um he was a a parachute fucking. I don't even know what they're called paratrooper. Paratrooper, yeah. yeah. So he was flying in, and he got and he they were shooting at him as he was coming down. So he had to like deviate. And he ended up getting stuck in, in a tree that was like thirty feet high. His parachute was stuck, so he's like stuck there for three days. And he ended up, they ended up capturing him. He ended up got, got released. Yeah, him, I know. went on the tour in in Ho Chi Minh in um, the the Coochie Trails they call them, and they had these tunnels. They had these elaborate tunnels that were like, uh, the first tunnel would go down about ten feet, and they're like these little rat holes, and they would go for hundreds and hundreds of yards. Fuck, then there was a second layer that would go down twenty there. feet. They had a third layer that would go down thirty feet, Holy Rick. Holy shit! And down there, how they did, how did they support it, dude? Because the 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 ground down there is this is this clay, and it just stays hard. It must have been a bitch to and get so, so much earth out of there. They had these tunnels uh, built all into these rivers. So, and the other thing is, Vietnamese people are very small. They're yeah. all like five four, yeah. ninety to one hundred pounds. Yeah, Koreans are the and, ones that are bigger and bigger Asians. One of the biggest things I learned is Vietnamese in a lot of, of Asian cultures for thousands of years, they take shit squatting. Yeah. Right? So you can't see if I squat, but yeah. like they sit like this. Yeah, that's where the squatty potty is super famous. Uh, right. I can't. I, I I travel with it. I <laughs> squatty potty. Right. So they squat like this. Right. Yeah. So I hope this isn't totally racially but, racist, but no, it's but it's genius. But Vietnamese people can squat like they can sit like that, and so what? What the They're point of that is? Is a dude would sit in the bushes with an AK forty seven like this 
with a little bag of rice and he could stay there for two or three days. And so what happened is he'd fire off rounds, boom, 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 boom. He'd crawl in the tunnel, go 100 feet away, come out and go boom, 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 boom. And the, the U.S. would be, go, they'd go, we're surrounded. We're yeah. surrounded. With it was just dude. one dude running around. It was oh, a bunch shit. of them. But yeah. they'd run around through these tunnels and, and they're so small. So anyway, these t- the, the, there was one part of the tour where they're like, hey, you, there, this tunnel's still there. You can go through it. You want to go through it? It's like 100 yards. And I'm super claustrophobic and it was really tiny. I was like, oh, I'm bro. good. Yeah. Hell no. <laughs> I can see it from out here. Send a camera down you know, there. Some but some shit. people crawl through them and stuff. And anyway, it was really interesting. That's um, super fucking fascinating. No wonder they kicked their asses. They were just clever. Yeah. And the tour guy we had was really cool. He was a Vietnamese, but he was uh, s- Southern Vietnamese. He fought on the U.S. side and he said, listen... Oh. He said, I know most of you are Americans, and I just want to tell you this because your country feeds you propaganda. He said, America helped Vietnam so much. And he said, the South Vietnamese killed more of the North than we killed them. And America has this bad rap, gets a bad rap for the Vietnam uh-huh. War, saying, oh, America lost. And he yeah. said, no, you guys really helped our country. Oh, so it was more of a civil thing going on. Yeah, it was I the mean, North what... and South fighting, mm-hmm. and we jumped in on it. Yeah. Um, but it was the U.S. But there was a bunch of politics. But he basically said, "No, America was really helpful uh, to us." You know, but they... dude, this necklace I'm wearing—it's—it's—it's it's, uh, it's, my girl got it for me in Miami. It says, "What goes around comes around," and they're called peace bombs. And these are the bombs. These are bombs that were dropped on Laos actually during the Vietnam War that didn't detonate. They were duds, so they got the metal off of those shits yep. and made jewelry. And this is this is what I'm. I wearing. went to Laos last year. No shit. I forget him. This where, where'd you go? Luang Prabang. <laughs> I went to Luan Prabang. Ah, I know that shit. <laughs> I spent New Year's Eve in... Um, it's cheap there too. It's... You know what? Luan Prabang is, is actually... It's cheap compared to America for sure. Yeah. Laos is the cheapest country. Mm-hmm. I've been to Vietnam, Thailand, Cambodia, Laos. They're but all in the same little chunk. They are, but, but Luan Prabang has a bunch of European uh, business people there and so they have tons of cafes. Oh, shit. So they That's have like $5 cups of coffee there. Oh. They have $100 plates of food there. So you can get fancy if you want. There's a tourist section. That's so it, Luang Prabang is kind of like, it feels like you're in a James Bond movie because it has this Eastern European vibe. Yeah. There's these trippy fucking jungle Asian people literally right across the river Yeah. and there's a bunch of it, it's a it's a really interesting city. Kind of like when they're playing blackjack in this fucking it's room. It's totally upstairs, like, and then there's like people outside, and like yeah, there's. People. It's this weird Euro ethnic Asian um, upper class city. So I went to Luang Prabang. I went to um, the city just south of that is uh, God. I can't think of the name. And then Vientiane. I spent New Year's Eve there, but I also learned about Lao. And so you should I, pick up the, one of the languages. Shit, well, you're over Thai, there all the time. I speak Thai a little bit. I know, uh, like, how to order Thai food. Like, oh, let me get some Tom Yum Gung. Yeah. <laughs> but what gung I, means shrimp. What I learned <laughs> was in the Vietnam War, when the fighter planes would go over to Vietnam, they could not come back to land. Why not? Unless they dropped their bombs. So what would happen is from your necklace, because yeah. Laos is the one country that has the most bombs dropped on it undetonated. So hundreds and thousands of people, thousands of people still die a year today. Farmers walking around... They step on bombs from oh, 25, 30 shit? years ago. Oh, my God. So what happens is these fighter jets would go to Vietnam. They drop a few bombs, and they want to come back. Yeah. And so they would just – they couldn't tell where the border was. So they would just fucking drop, drop, drop <laughs> so we can land. Oh, my God. So we were just bombing the Idiots. shit out of Lao because they had to get the bomb off so they could land the plane. And they're you, like, hey, man, we're not even in on this shit. Yeah, so you can't land the plane when there was a bomb still on it. So that's why there's – That's so That's what your necklace comes from is yeah. there's thousands of bombs in Lao. Holy shit. That's this is a massive sucks. jungle. You couldn't see where the border was. They got fucked. Oh, they that did. sucks, man. They did, unfortunately. But Laos is a, is a beautiful country. Um, but, Damn, that's tight, man. Yeah. Man, what... Uh, so so then I came... So I went to... to I go to, I, I go into Bangkok mm-hmm. for a few days. I got a bunch of buddies there. Um, and yeah, then I go north. I go to Chiang Mai, which is in the north. And I get on a little moped. Tight. And I take a moped and I, I go about five or six hundred K... Damn. Over five or six days, and I drive all up north near That's the Golden far. Triangle. Yeah, it takes about five or six days. You drive about three or four hours a day That's on a little so ass moped, which is normal it's over probably there. Probably uncomfortable. Over here, it's nuts. I wouldn't drive home yeah. from here on a yeah, moped. For real. But you get, you over there, it it's like driving to you know, Sacramento on yeah. a moped. Shit. And then I, so I spent a week or two in the north, and then I spent a week or two in the, in the islands and scuba dive and 
chill on the beach and don't wear shoes for a couple do weeks. You, do you go and, and write out there? Because you're, you, you're big on writing, right? Um, I do I do some writing, yeah. When I was there last year, um, w- I was hired to, to, to write another movie. Um, and so I did some writing there, and then we came home, and the guy changed his idea, and we started another script. It, but yeah, I, with my laptop, I can write anywhere. What about your books? Have you, have you put on any books recently or not? I haven't. I've been I've been telling people and myself. I have a, a new book that's I'm supposed to, I was supposed to put out this summer. It's but on the I've, shelf. I've been lagging. No, it's already done. I've got. That's what I'm saying. It's finished and on the oh, shelf. Oh yeah, yeah. I have I have three more that are actually finished. Uh, just Shit. putting them together and publishing them is just it's street fame books. Street fame books. It's um it's fun. It's a hobby. Yeah. Um, I feel you. That's what this is right here, bro. It's um, it's just time consuming. I mean, I literally hand build all of my books by myself. Yeah, that's got and that's so a beast. to order them from the printers to get them back, it's hard for me after years of living with it to to see all the typos and to do the editing. Yeah. And, Go through it with fine to, tooth and comb. Yeah, so it take it's a long process. I I'd love to be down the road have someone. Hey, that's their job. Yeah, you do the editing, you do yeah. the typos. Have a little computer guy. He yeah. fucks with all the borders and all that. Um, but it's fun but it's a long process I get it printed from my printer I come through there's a couple margin tweaks Mm -hmm. I make the tweaks I send it back another two weeks come so it's a process but I definitely have a new book coming out nice Um, and all all your books what are are they all based are they all different or like what do you usually what's your theme do you have a a thing you go for usually you know most of them are are poetry Um, I write stream of consciousness uh, which is basically ranting yeah you know that's what we're doing right now um and there's some pros. I, I, I What do you mean? Like ranting about just any any particular subject? No, I mean, I'm like the worst knowledgeable poet for someone who's published eight books of poetry. Yeah. Like everyone's like, who's your favorite poet? I'm like, I don't, I don't know, fucking shit. read poetry. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? But I mean, that makes sense. Like, <laughs> I, I like, I, I mean, it kind of does. I mean, I like Charles Bukowski and I, I, I like James Joyce and um, basically. I mean, of, you think Charles, you know, you think Bukowski is fucking reading somebody else's stuff? I don't know. Those guys were those guys definitely were 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 listening to each other, you know, mm-hmm. and, and reading other stuff. And I I do read poetry, but the point of that is is I couldn't name ten of the most current poets yeah. out there or ten of my favorite poets. Yeah. Um, I love songwriters. I love music. I grew up a lot listening to. Um, I like folk music, you know, and um, interesting. So there's two types of poems I write. There's one that I'm forcing myself. To try to paint this emotional photograph, and then there are Which is tough. there are ones that uh, hasn't happened in a little while. But honest to God, I come home like fucking Rain Man, and I'm just like, <laughs> and they just come out of me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like two days later, I'm like, holy shit, who wrote that? This is some fire. So yeah. yeah, there's definitely there is. They talk about the muse or the gift, and it's hard to call it. But well, you know what I it think does it is. Come sometimes. This is this is a weird thing. Um. I feel like this is what I feel. Like. I feel like essentially we're playing a video game, right? And this is our avatar, and we have different. Like I look at it like graphs. It just helps me understand shit. I look at it in graphs, percentages, and video game type terms. Right. So then I see it as like, you know, we have your health scale, you have your finance scale, you have all these things that you have to advance to beat this level, and every level has a lesson that you got to learn. And once you pass that lesson, there's some other shit, and it only gets harder. People have yeah. this illusion that it gets easier. You know what I mean? You have your own business. That shit's harder, bro. You know what I mean? Like, or doing your own thing. It's, it's harder. Uh, and I feel like, it, since it's our avatar, in a way, it's not like, this isn't us, right? We're not constrained to these five senses. It's more so of like, we're a stream of consciousness accessing this avatar and experiencing itself through different versions of itself. If sure. that makes any sense. Totally you know I mean? does. Like, looking out through a different You're talking window. about the soul and the conscious and... and- yeah, I, to- I totally do. I, so, I so, exactly so about. because of that, some you know, I feel like that's why it's the most frustrating thing to communicate for people to get out. Like, fuck, man, I feel this thing, but I don't know how to put it into words, man. That's when that's a lot of times it's forcing. It's because you're getting this god type energy. You don't know how to like, fuck. I want, I want to explain it to you in a certain way, but I know that you feel differently or you think differently, and like, right. it's, it's hard for me to put it well, into words. And sometimes you're able to access that, and that's when you become this rain man, dude. Where it's just like, fuck. Well, all frequency. all crafts and all sports and all athletes and all musicians. I mean, everything takes monotonous hours and hours and hours of yeah. practice. Yeah. And you know how it is as a drummer yeah. and as an actor and and you know being athletic and it's got to be an obsession if if you're first of all i wrote my first six books before i had facebook before i had instagram before i had twitter 
Yeah. You know, that people always ask me all the time, they're like, how do you write a book? I'm like, delete your fucking Facebook. Yeah. That's, that's how you do helped. it. Yeah. Because that's just such a distraction. Because when you come home from work or from wherever, you you know, it's funny because my brother's a big Tony Robbins fan. and um, big, beautiful motherfucker. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and I, I had heard a couple things, but I went to his seminar. My brother cheated me last year and I was sort of like, I don't want to fuck with, you know, I'm Tony Robbins. This dude's going to be yelling at me and everything. Yeah. I went with an open mind. It was amazing. Yeah. This isn't a Tony Robbins you know, plug, yeah. but he talked about some cool things. And one of the things he talked about was like, people say, Oh, I'd love to uh, learn to ride a horse, but I don't have time. Yeah. And he says, bullshit. He goes, tell me what you do in your day. Yeah. Right. And so he goes, so anyway, there was a part of somebody who goes, I want you to sit down right now with a piece of paper and write down how much time do you spend a day on social media? And he goes, be fucking honest. And so I'm like, all right, as soon as I wake up 10 minutes, Instagram, yeah. Uh, I have my coffee. I'm like, okay, 10 minutes Facebook. I take shit. 10 minutes Instagram. I calculate. I was like, boom, boom. I calculated about almost 40 to 60 minutes a day. God damn. It's worth an hour. Yeah, right? An hour. On social media. So the six times seven is 42 hours a week. I mean, uh, 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 yeah, a week, right? Yeah, six times seven. Six hours, seven cents, 42 hours a week. Oh, no, no, sorry. No, say, uh, say, say, for example, if it's an hour a day, you're Seven a- days after a week, that's 42 hours, bro. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's a full fucking work week. Yeah. Okay? If No, no. See, if you're doing an hour a day, it would be like 30 hours a month. So it would be like two weeks of, of basically working full time. Six times a month. seven is 42. Yeah, but it's not six hours. It's one hour a day. Correct. Thank you. So 30 hours a month. Yeah. That's okay. a lot. That's a full time job. 12. Yeah, I don't know what that is. That's a lot. You lost me there. But it's a lot of time. <laughs> right? Know? It's and more than enough time it, to learn was, how to do some I, shit. I think it was like almost a month. Yeah. It I was mean, almost a month. It probably so is. basically Tony was like saying, cut some certain shit out of your life. He goes, wake up an hour earlier. It's more than a month because see, even in, in two months, you're at like, yeah, it's ridiculous. I don't know. It's a lot. <laughs> so, so you're going pull to out, pull out the calculator. It was, uh, it. So the point of that is, um, is every night when I'd come home, instead of getting online, I would just go, I would just write. Yeah. I would just go write poetry. Or, you know, and at just, first you probably have to force yourself. I would just write. Yeah, but when you do it every day, all of a it sudden, habit. it's like a printer and you can just start printing these in, these emotional photographs. Yeah, yeah. You know? That's why I don't like to stop things. I don't like stop, I don't like to stop working out. I don't like to stop doing yoga. You know, I don't like to stop meditating. I don't, because, it's so much harder to start again. You know what I mean? Like once you're in a rhythm, it's like, all right, I've built up rhythm. I'm doing good. Or even eating well. You know what I mean? You eat fucked up one day and you feel it's like so easy dog to fucking, shit. Totally. I almost, I know I drove, I know, I don't eat fast food at all. Nice. Yeah. Which is good because you used a lot of, you see a lot of fast food. Me? <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. Way back. I mean like years ago. Yeah. That's what you said. I don't know. Maybe you were lying to me. No, I used to fuck with McDonald's until that huge lawsuit came out. <laughs> That fucked me up, dude. Do you remember what I'm talking about? Where they mean, proved that it was like 98% not meat? Yeah. No, it was, was it not meat? or what No, dude. Was it? it was like 98% not meat. One, one of our current events. I'll bring it up today. Wow. And I, that fucked me up, dude. Yeah. And I was like, 98? Like, this is mystery Like, meat? this isn't 12 or 15. I was like, I knew it was kind of fucked up. But yeah. Literally, <laughs> it was like 98% not meat. This is before all those documentaries came yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, Anyway... No, I think I, we're we're living it's when like the big spiritual awakening right I now. eat really clean. I eat really controlled. Um I'm kind of a a, a little meticulate controlling yeah, at home. Um you know, I've got my steamer, I've got my neutral Me too, bro. boom. I've got my <laughs> Kangen water, I've got, you know, uh a kind of a controlled diet. And when I go on the road, I bring my bullet, I bring gallons of my own water. Nice. I bring all my supplements, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Um Same but here. I don't fuck with fast food, but I do fuck with in and out. Nice. Once in a while. I mean, you gotta treat yourself every now and then. I get it. Yeah. I tell people, I'm like, it's okay to fuck off every now and if you're, if you go 100 percent of it, like for me, I go as hard as I can every exercise, every day, every time I'm there. I give all of my effort until I can't fucking breathe anymore. Same thing with yoga. And I'm like, when I do that, if I eat something bad, like once, you know, every once in a, which is rare for me, but it's like if I eat something bad, it's like I don't feel that bad about it. I physically feel worse about it. You know what I mean? You're like, damn, I shouldn't. Like I feel like sluggish and shit. Yeah, but, it's an impulse thing for yeah. most people. And I, and I, dude, that's funny. Another one of our current events is right about this too. All of this shit we're saying. What's current events? We, we're gonna do current events, bro. Later. Oh, okay. It's this is part of the show, bro. Uh, okay, cool. 
All right. <laughs> yeah, man. So I don't know, man. It's it's kind of a trip. What do you think? Um, what do you think your biggest inspiration is to, to write? Is it just to get your thoughts out? Um, you know, well, when I first, you know, I got sober in, in uh, two thousand and seven. Nice. And I remember oh seven. I thought I basically I spent I spent all of my twenties totally fucking loaded. Yeah. And then I spent like all 10. of my thirties stone cold sober. Damn. Literally. Like, yeah. s- from, you know, date to date. 180, like total opposites. Totally. So it's funny because when I was like getting loaded every day, and I had a great 20s. Yeah. I've been around the world multiple times. Yeah. I've been on TV shows and jet airplanes and yeah. dungeons and yeah. crazy trailers yeah. and scary places. And I had a, gr- a great. You got to live through that shit. I'm, I'm nearing the end of mine, bro. So, like. But I thought I was a creative person when I was high every day. Uh, but it wasn't until I actually got sober. Did all this content just start pouring out of me? Yeah. So I wrote like five or six books in the first four years. Do you think it was more so of like being clear headed for such a long for not being clear headed for such a long time, and then finally being like, oh shit, I can get my thoughts straight and like put this shit out? Because I feel like a lot of times weed can be an enhancer, right, for people like creatively. It's funny because it's like the biggest commercial for weed. But it's, it's a, but creativity, it's a, but, but it's, it's in the moderation. exact fucking opposite. I feel like people just abuse it too much. You know I don't I mean? think weed's creative at all. Really? <laughs> no, and I'm like the biggest weed head in the world. I just don't smoke it anymore. Yeah. But I do like, sativa. I don't do indica. It just depends on what I'm smoking. No, weed is, I mean, I don't know. I thought I was creative before, but it wasn't, like I said, it wasn't until till I turned 30 and, and totally went the other way. It did pretty much everything successful in my life happened. All this creativity was pouring out of me. I wrote four books of poetry. I wrote an eight hundred page, like autobiographical novel, um, kind of based on my old, yeah, criminal, nice. colored. Um, Do you life. talk about that a lot? Um, a little bit, yeah. And you think um, that that helped you a lot, like as far as in your journey as like trying to find yourself as a person. Was that a wake up call, or was it not? Was it until after? You know. I mean, it's definitely part of the journey. When I was a kid, I wanted to be uh, a doctor, a drug dealer, a movie star, <laughs> and and a or a rock star. Dude, I was a lot of those. I wanted to you be a rock I mean? star. I wanted, yeah, a movie star. All those things. I, I wanted. always wanted to be a biz- businessman, and I always wanted to have yeah. money. Yeah. And I share this. I speak at conventions and stuff sometimes. And, yeah. And I t- when I always tell the story. When I was in third grade, it was Halloween, mm-hmm. and it, people come dressed up in costumes. People yeah. came as you know, Mary Poppins and yeah. fucking. Uh, Mickey Mouse and Batman yeah. and I would put on a suit and come with a briefcase <laughs> and people would be like who are you and I would be like I'm a businessman yeah. <laughs> right? and I'm that was my Halloween business, costume yeah. I didn't know it was going to be like a drug dealer businessman yeah. <laughs> or like you know I didn't say I was an attorney but I had a briefcase and a suit you where, know? Did, where did you grow up? I grew up in San Francisco okay so like yeah it's real close to Oakland you know what I mean the opportunity I grew there. up in the hood uh, oh, see, so I grew similar up to me. Right across the, the freeway from Hunter's Point. Okay. Um, yeah. Not a safe area. HP, which was RBL Posse, Rappin' Forte came out at mm-hmm. Hunter's Point. Yeah. Um, all all my kids, it's funny because if you look at my baby pictures, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all my birthday parties, all little black kids yeah. and me. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, funny. Um, and then when I Because that's was, predominantly what these, unfortunately, that's what, I mean, I was in South Central. It's the same shit. You know what I mean? Latino and black. Yeah. No, no. I'm good with the black community. I, I spent my first 10 years there. And then my my father was a carpenter and he got a little more successful. He moved us up into Marin County. That's funny. Which the is same a, thing happened to us. We moved to the valley. <laughs> yeah. Which is about 20 miles north of San Francisco. Very rich, very white, very opposite suburban. BMW, they yeah. used to call it Newly Wed or Nearly Dead. Oh, uh, nice. And the Grateful Dead lived there, and Metallica. Oh, and, beautiful. And it was a very upper-class um, suburban. Metallica's on tour again. Shit. I just saw him. No shit, I how are they? Saw oh, that's right, I saw badass, it. Badass, I fucking dude. love Metallica. I mean, I... I dude, that it was, was badass. I saw him, um, a good a good friend of mine, Sarah, she's a, a music manager, and, and she's dialed in with the music biz, and so... We both love Metallica. She's like, you want to go to the show? I'm like, yeah, it's in San Diego. Oh, I was yeah. like, fuck it. Yeah. So we drove down. We had great seats. Is that the first time you've seen him? No, I saw him three or four times, but I haven't seen him in 20 years. Yeah. Um, Dude, James Hetfield had to get surgery on his fucking neck from headbanging so much. 
He really? Was, yeah, this place. He was on Joe Rogan's podcast talking about oh, it. Oh, wow. He's I didn't like, hear that. But... He's like, yeah, dude, I had to get certain, like, yeah, I don't know, he had a herniated disc in his neck just from I, I will of... say, <clears throat> I'll tell you what. I, I went to Metallica and Guns N' Roses and Soundgarden and Nirvana, seen all those guys 20 years ago. But being an artist and being in the industry and being 40 years old now yeah. and knowing what, you know, the Hollywood machine is mm-hmm. and landing in big movies yeah, and not yeah. killing yourself or drinking yourself to death. Yeah. The fact that they can sell out stadiums 30 fucking years it, later. I think there's been more than 30, dude, it's been right? More than 30 years. Okay, the show was sold out. Because they were killing it in the 80s. It was the sickest pyro I've ever seen. Oh, it shit. was the sickest fucking stage production I've ever seen. And they all looked badass. They, they all look really they healthy, shredded, too. Shredded. They have a lot of money. And they played for like two and a half hours. <laughs> Holy shit. In fact, we left early because we were getting tired. Damn. <laughs> but it was a badass show dude yeah, I, san diego I, they're one of my favorites show. man I, I they got me through my fucking teen years bro like unbelievable that that um with this age where everybody's on a phone nobody buys albums anymore it's all about merch it's all yeah. about touring well they're on tour because lars got lynched for that for like a long t- shit i shouldn't even be using that word but he got like hung for that uh for like going after napster in the big in the big i ba- just watched that documentary Dude, it was fucked up was because really a lot good. of artists, a lot of really big artists, sided with Lars, but they didn't want to. They didn't want to come out and publicly say it because he was getting so much backlash from the public. Yeah, but you know what? The studios did that. The record labels did that. Everybody went through that. That was the burst of the internet. Yeah, and but he was just the thing. It was with him. It was with Napster. So, say for example, if you got a family and you get a, you got kids, or whatever, I totally get the it. Albums I remember, you're selling I remember living goes through to it. Zero, you know? I totally get it, but Lars wasn't the. He was the one of the people on the forefront putting his That's name what I'm saying. out there. He got hung for it, and he wasn't sure. Even... They got a lot of backlash for it, but you know what? I looked at my friend Sarah and I said, "You know what? Out of all the drama and all the controversy, all those moves they made along the ro- the the road were yeah. the right moves yeah, they because they're out. still here selling shows." Dude, Slayer just played Jimmy Fallon. I was like, holy shit. They played uh, Rain and Blunt at Jimmy Fallon. And, wow. Like, all these guys. Wow. All the, but I think it's just the tightest time for art right now, man. Like, it's the, it's the it best It is. Time. The music industry hits, gets it hit even harder than our industry, dude. Because yeah. Because nobody buys records. And that's why, I, honestly, that's why I left the music industry. Because you're getting fucked left and right in the music industry. You don't get protected. You don't have, like, a union. Like, I'm, I was a drummer, bro. Like... Ain't nothing protecting me. You're replaceable in that industry unless you're some sort of personality or you have some, you know, you have a group that's tight. You're replaceable. And it's just yeah. an industry where there's so much. They can take your content. Everybody wants everything for free. Well, if, that's what I'm saying. If you have a great song or you have great, you're a great musician, it's one thing, but how do you make a buck? Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's Everybody, I mean, I have Spotify. I pay 10 bucks a month. Yeah. Yeah. If someone tells me about an album, I just go click, click, yeah. click, and I listen to it. Yeah, the crazy thing is that all those things, so like, I, I, it's me, I have Pandora, I have Spotify, all that shit. And the, it sucks is that the record labels get make all the money off of that. Because, like, Pharrell had the most played song on Pandora, and he made 2400 bucks or something like that. Or 24000 might have been. Yeah, I don't know how it they pay the out. Most played. Well, because I think Spotify, I heard it's, it's pennies on, on yeah, the Yeah, the one, that's why they started Tidal. I don't know if you heard of Tidal with Jay-Z. That's why they did that shit, because they're like, artists are going to do it. We're going to make our own money with our own subscription. But it's expensive. Well, Jay's so smart. I don't know if that was the reason why he did it. He knew he'd be able to sell the Sprint for $400 yeah, yeah. million. Dollars. It's still expensive, though. I mean, it's like fuck, 40 bucks a month or some crazy shit Isn't, like that. I yeah. thought it was just, I thought it was 10 I mean, maybe there might be different packages, but I remember when it first came out, it was expensive. Uh, yeah. Shit, man, it's time for some hot seat questions. All right, <laughs> what do we got? What do we got? All right, brother, what's your what's your idea of a dope ass night? Your I- ideal like perfect night? Oh my god, this is sounds so fucking boring, dude. <laughs> oh Same my here, though. god, uh, a dope ass night. Uh... I mean, it, honestly, it changes. Right now, I'm single. Yeah. I'm really enjoying um, not getting involved in all the drama of trying to date in Los Angeles 2017. It's fun being alone. I like being alone a lot, too. Even being in a relationship, it's still it's fun to be by yourself once you learn I'm really yourself. comfortable in my solitude right now. It's perfect, yeah. So, uh, for me, a dope-ass night is maybe going on a night hike with my dogs. Yeah, Charlie. What's, Charlie what's the newest name? And Skip. Skip. Skip, welcome to the family. Shit, shout out to Skip. Um, <laughs> you know, maybe having a nice dinner. Um, Love me some food. What's your, what's your, what's your poison? I don't even know how, the answer to that question. Come on, know? bro. I'm telling you right now. Like, say, you, Robert, you want to eat tonight. What are you eating tonight? Dinner. I'm so, so 
hypothetically predictable. I'd probably go to a bomb ass Thai food. <laughs> yeah, me too, bro. It's the same. You know, shit or I go get or or Mexican. I like Mexican food. Yeah. Um. I'm honestly, I'm I'm pretty. I'm a pretty easy going. I'm pretty easy. Uh, do you watch any? Happy. Do you watch anything specific? Is there something like that's like your your go to watch or something? I just uh, ran through Narcos. Oh, nice. I mean, uh, I, Narcos was great. I mean, Ozark. Oh, I heard great things about you it. It's Jason it? Bateman, right? Oh, he's a beast, dude. I love Jason Bateman. It's he's like this, it's this, I think it's it's the it's his career performance. Homeboy with Down syndrome's in it, right? Vanessa's friend. Who? In Pretty Ozark? sure. Yeah. Or it might be the second season that he just put. Vanessa's friend. Yeah, he's this kid. He did like it was funny because I saw it. She she would always post videos with this kid. He has Down syndrome, and he was like he would do background on set or whatever wherever she was working on, and she was always oh, like shouting him out. There is a dude. Yeah, yeah, he's a little white kid. Yeah, he is. He, and he works at the store. So he's been he has wanting. A couple scenes. He's been wanting to go like you know he's been wanting to be an actor for so many years and of course it's tough especially being somebody with Down syndrome. It's hard. Yeah, for... he lives he, on the show. On the show, it's it's you gotta see it. It's, yeah. it's dark. See that's what I like. Dark narrative drama. I like that shit too though because that's what makes me like that's what's got. Yeah, a it's really good. Check it out. Um, so I would say yeah, a good dinner. I mean, hanging with some friends, but I don't. I don't need to go. Out. You know, I'm. Yeah. I wouldn't be saying going to Vegas or fucking like crazy. But you've already done that. I've done that. It's just once you've done it a million times, you're like, I'm good. I figured it out. You know, yeah. <laughs> chill with my dogs, chill with my friends, have some good food. Would you rather go to the future or go to the past? But you got to be blind. For both. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I mean, fuck. I would. It's definitely a bit easier to go to the past blind. Yeah, because you could tell yourself shit, right? Well, yeah. no, because people aren't watching TV. They're not looking at screens. There's oh, no radio. It's just like woods and shit. Where's the horse? But who's to say where consciousness is going? Like maybe people are just gonna be. Would I go in to the past the or the future? And I have to be blind. Yeah, either one. You go to. I'd go to the future. Yeah, right. I mean, you 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 would hope to believe they've already figured it out. No, I'm a future dude. Like. Growing up, people were like, you know, there's kids who want to be greasers and kids who like to have 80s. I was always yeah. current. Yeah. I'm current. Yeah. 2017. Fuck the past. I like new shit. <laughs> I like new music. It's the best shit, right? I I'm... like, I don't know. I'm just, I'm I don't, I'm not a millennial, but I like current stuff. Yeah, I feel I you. I like modern stuff. I feel you. I'm the same way. I like handmade shit, too. Like, I'm, I like a lot of cool shit that's like old, but still, for the most part. Especially technology. I would go to the future. Yeah. Boom. All right, uh, what is your deal breaker for women, or and that everybody oh, should have? Do you think? So many. There's one. There's your so many. top one. Your I'm top. I'm gonna lose all my female fans right now. <laughs> They're gonna be like, "Fuck this, you, dude." Uh, number one deal breaker. I yeah. have, come on. Can that I, uh, that, you, that other deal? dudes should share. You know? Yeah, give me shoot off a few. Other dudes should share. Like I'm saying, like other dudes should have these deal breakers too. You think? And you're. Oh, oh, you mean like red flags? To yeah, watch exactly. Out for? Yeah, shoot off a few. <sighs> if you go out with a chick, okay. You know what the funny thing about social media is, is everyone's attracted to these girls and fucking with the booty or the bikini and you know with tons of followers. But you hang out with these people; they're glued to their fucking phone. That's what. That's Nothing how they turns became me that off person. more than someone who's glued to their phone. So if I go on a date and the chick's checking her phone nonstop, turn off. I'm out. I'll tell you, biggest deal. One of the biggest deal breakers for me is bad breath. Me too, dude. I hate bad if breath. You got bad man. breath. One, it's hard to tell. It's Hard to tell your partner that for that you've been with it's for years. It's an awkward thing to say, yeah. But it's hard to tell someone new that. Yeah. You know, you how many times she'd be like, "Hey, you want gum? Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll <laughs> pop a gum in first. I always carry gum? Altoids. Want some gum? Yeah. Bad breath is, is a turn off, a, a big one for me. I feel like you should know, right? I'll tell you another big, the biggest one for me is, which some people know this, but I don't know why it's fucked up. But if girls talk about taking a shit, yeah, it's kind of weird. Done. It's kind of weird. I'm done. I don't like it either. It's fucking like, like on Bronx Tale. I'm like, he's like, if he, if she doesn't unlock the door for you, she's a fucking whore. Yeah. You dump her. <laughs> dump her. He's like, dump her. Dump, dump her. her. <laughs> like, if I'm on a date and a girl says the word poo or shit Ugh. or talks about taking a shit, you better be easing into I'm that like, girl. I'm like, you're done. You better be years into this game before done. you even mention the fucking word. And I agree. I will say my ex, she was really good at that. She knew me really well. She was like, she she would always say like, I'm going to use the restroom. I'm going to use the yeah. ladies room. Yeah. I, I do get a little old fashioned when it comes to, to manners around the table. I'm the same way though. I'm not going to be like, yo, I'm going to go take a shit while I'm at the dinner table. You I know, know but I feel like, like it's a little bit kind of uptight of me because Maybe. who really cares? Chicks take shits. For sure. You know what I mean? But for some reason, for me, Fuck it, I man. don't like it. Yeah. When a chick that I'm intimately and romantically interested yeah. in, I don't want to hear her talking about yeah. it. Yeah. 
I'm not going to tell you about it either. You know I mean? Let's just share that. Let's not tell each other about um, it. Another deal breaker is uh, chicks talking about their exes. God, nothing. It's like, yo, you're still, you still love this dude. All right, what the fuck am I doing here? Am I, uh, yeah, you know, which could be depends on how you play it, guys. Cause shit, if you want to be a rebound, all right, keep talking to that girl and hit it, whatever. If that's what your end mission is. I'll tell you what else turns me off. I have so many, dude. I'm totally cool with with being the gentleman. I'm cool with picking up the tab. I'm cool with that's being me. in charge. We're going to dinner here. We're doing this. But uh, if we've been on seven or eight dates. And you never once tried to slide your ATM card out, yeah. To like, hey, let's split it, or let me get this one. If they never do that on six or seven dates, I'm like deal breaker. Yeah, there's this guy online. I forget his name. He, he but he does puts out a bunch of dope videos. He's like this Australian guy with long hair. He's talking about it. He's like, ladies, who should? He's in a seminar talking to all these fucking single women. They're like, ovulating. <laughs> they're all like, yo, they're all single, and he's talking. He's like, who should pick up the tab? And they're like, the men. And he's like. The way he explained it, and I loved it because it's brilliant. He's like, look, you should look at your partner as like a best friend. And would you treat your best friend that way? Like, yo, let's always go to dinner and you always pay for my shit. <laughs> totally. And it's just because, totally. because then you make it seem like my time is worth money, well, not yours. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm worth more than you. Totally. And so like, they're like, if, this, if you don't offer to pay, you weren't raised right. If he doesn't say, nah, 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 I got it. Don't trip. Right. Let me. Because once wasn't raised right. Because once they take their card out, I'll be like, no, 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 baby, yeah. I got you. Let me win this. I got shit. you. Yo. I got you. But yeah. if I don't ever see them take that, I'll be like, no, I'm gonna have to pay for everything forever. Yeah. The entire fucking relationship. Yeah. You know. That's, and you ain't even married yet. I I, no, yeah, I, no, I, I dated like, I dated a, 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 a couple months ago. We went out five or six times. And she was fine. I spent a, a bunch of money on her yeah. more than I normally did. I've done that. She was fine. Mistake. And then one night I said, hey, why don't you come over to my house, take an Uber, I'll, I'll meet you at the crib, I'll leave the door open. And she's like, yeah. all right, send me a car. And I was like, Skirt. no, bitch, I ain't your daddy. What do you mean? Yeah. I send you a car. How are you, how you get just, around regularly? I watched you shrimp and lobster last week, took you to the fucking weekend. <laughs> like, I said, I called her straight up and I was like, I said, you, you mean that's the best me, way to be You're direct. not going to come out of pocket for $13 for a fucking lift ride? Then yeah. this is going to be a problem. Yeah. Because think about a relationship, how you're going to, you're just going to go the whole life. You're broke as fuck and she's just stacking no, up her flag. chips. It's a flag that she will never pay. Yeah. And it's women want up. equal rights, they want equal pay. You know? Yeah, yeah, but they don't want to be like, oh. they don't want. You know? I don't like that shit because there's a fine line. So many women are like, I'm a feminist, and all this, 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 and that, and I'm like, I think the man should pay for sure the majority of the time for sure. But in but 2017, figure it a out. A woman makes good money, and they make better. A men, lot of women make more money than men these days. Sure, sure, and it can be emasculating. The opposite. I've dated women who were yeah. wealthier than me. I feel you on that. It's kind of weird. And you get emasculated when you can't keep up with your woman's lifestyle. But it also drives you to be like, yo, I gotta get my shit together. It to does, like, unless she's way the fuck yeah. down the road. Then, and you're, then like, you're like, you know what? Fuck this. I meet you there. <laughs> about you know, uh, how many times does lightning have to strike in the next <laughs> fiscal year for me to catch up to her? Yeah, for you know real. I mean? Fuck. I booked six movies. Yeah. I did six commercials, and I'm on All Jimmy nationals. Kimmel. Yeah, totally. <laughs> All I got you, baby. <laughs> Shit. That's hard, man. That's hard. Yeah, so uh, those are my top top four red flags. Man, you just dropped some knowledge on these people. Take notes, ladies and gentlemen. Take notes, depending on what you're into. Yeah. Ladies. Even if you don't want to pay, just pretend you just take your card out and yeah. then put it back. Yeah. <laughs> it's not uh, Because honestly, it also helps a man feel like, you know what I mean? Like, let me get a fucking win in, yo. You know what I mean? Like, that... In a way, it's it's a man. It makes a man feel good to be like, because that's what a man's higher purpose forward. is. If I never see that card come out, yeah, I like to travel, bro. Yeah, I think okay. Well, I'm gonna go do a month at Bam. I gotta get her airfare. I gotta get her food. I gotta yeah. Fuck but this hope, dinner. I, I've eaten good go shit. To everywhere. Paris. We're gonna go to Greece. Oh, damn. Every. I mean, I yeah. guess that's the reality. Most men out there. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Women yeah. cost money. What's your favorite conspiracy theory? Last but not least. Favorite conspiracy theory. Yeah. Do you follow any? Like the assassination of JFK, or like, or fucking I don't know UFOs or something. I think the most controversial one that I'll probably fuck a bunch of people up by saying it is nine eleven. Oh, that's the biggest. That's the one that's the most obvious to me. I think nine eleven was a bunch of bullshit. One hundred percent. But like, that's just me. I mean, because my brother's the, a fireman. There's a whole group of he architects. has fireman friends. I wrote a, a movie called Table Eighteen based on. All the, I didn't want to get into it. Building 7 was never even hit. Did you hear the recording where they go, ta- the, pull it? Have you heard yeah, the audio? boom, boom, boom. And Homeboy the, pulled out a new insurance policy right before. Building 7 was never even, building 4 was, 4 7 was never seven. even hit. It went seven. down. 
Yeah, I mean these buildings. Most people don't even know about Tower Seven. These that's buildings. The, that's would, the knowledge that they don't know about Tower Seven. Tower growing Seven. Up, yeah, growing up, my father being a general contractor, I used to weld as a kid. I know a little bit about welding. I know a little bit about melting steel and what it takes to burn and to melt steel and to get steel to create hot fucking dripping lava. Yeah. All this stuff. Anyway, I think 9-11 was an inside job. That's the only... I think. You know what I think it was? I think they saw it coming and they just took advantage of the situation. And they let it happen and they, I and they benefited from it. I think there's a, such a bigger picture there, you know, but... I don't know. Maybe, there, maybe. Yeah, you're right because cause that, that's the only way you get a country to commit genocide, to get behind you to commit genocide. Sure. You know? This country has been... Has, Notorious Has been doing what we do for a really long time, you yeah. know? Um, El Salvador, I did, I'll tell you Guam. this. I I called Trump. I called Trump. I bet my my the no same shit. buddy, my, my same friend Moti, the CPA. I was talking about the international price reduction specialist. <laughs> <laughs> my buddy is going to Israel right now. Bro, the cheapest nice. first class ticket in the world. <laughs> He's but, living it up, drinking champagne. Uh, <laughs> he bet me last year. I said, I bet you. We bet dinner. I said, I, I said Trump's gonna take it. Yeah. He's like, no fucking way, RJ. Are you kidding me? I said, yeah, I bet you dinner. He's like, all right. I said, I. This country is so fucking stupid. Yeah. Have you seen Idiocracy? No. Oh, man. It's good. It was done a while ago. It's Maya Rudolph. Terry Crews is the president in it. It's like in the future, right? These guys get stuck in a pod and they get Luke. I think it's Luke. Uh, Luke Wilson is the lead in it. And they're in the future and everybody's fucking stupid. They're watering crops with Gatorade. They're all watching <laughs> really? screens. Yeah, because it's got electrolytes. And they're like, do you guys know what electrolytes are? And then yeah, Terry Crews scary. shoots an AK-47 and he wears a flag suit. I'm like, we're slowly... That shit's becoming a documentary. It is, dude. And when, the more time you spend out of this country, the more embarrassing you see it really is. Because everybody's like, yo, around no, the world. It's just, it's gets, it was embarrassing 20 years ago when I was in Europe, you know, but it's yeah. it's embarrassing. Yeah, yeah. You know? Because it's it's a representation. They get a representation, representation of the whole American people and it's like, man, that ain't us. Like, we're... But, I don't know. He's the first popular it person. It is us, dude. I mean, yeah, in a way. I, I was I was in Cabo with my mom, and I'm not getting on a big political thing, but I called Trump Should was gonna win. It. I I was I stayed up that night. It was November nine. I was in Cabo. The whole fucking That's country funny. was red. I I people I, I flew stopped here that day. I remember. complaining about fucking Russia. Yep. Everybody fucking voted for Trump. Yep. And it's like yeah. they said Hillary won by like a million people the popular vote. You know what yeah. that means? Nothing. That means she won Santa Monica City. Yeah, over which the whole crazy. country, which is crazy, right? People that don't think about how unlikable she was as a candidate. They cho- they, 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 just, they fucked Bernie dude, over to get her through, and then I was watching the screen. The whole yeah. country was red. It was unbelievable. I remember I flew in that day from Mexico and I'm looking at this shit and I remember I got this weird feeling like, oh shit. I don't know why. Like, it's, it's never affected me before. I think everybody was like, oh shit. Yeah, but it's never affected Even me before. Trump's like, Obama didn't shit. call me, you know, when he was in office or whatever. But I, I was like, oh my God. Trump's gonna win. Like, when he when the electoral votes and shit. I don't know. He's the first popular person to ever win the popular contest. Popularity contest. I don't even think it was... I mean, honestly, like, Trump is such a fucking... And I think it's good for us. Disappointment. I think it's good for us. But it's I, the only way we'll jump off this stupid ass political. I will say system. something controversial. Say it. In in the beginning of the right the race, there was brief moments for me, and I kind of grew up kind of conservative Republican. Yeah. In my family, my dad was like old school racist, carpenter, Italian. Yeah. But tr- it was it was sort of relieving to hear someone just be honest. Yep. And talk normal. That's why he won. Right. And so, and at first, people thought, like, oh, this guy's really going to, like, oh. he's, you know, he's fighting dirty. He's he telling sounds the like truth. Me. He, sa- he wants change. He's going to do all. Th- and I think people were just so tired of hearing the politics and they heard this guy who was telling the truth, but they didn't realize he, it was a he's masterful yeah. win. And that's why American, he's being able to become Donald Trump by doing the same type of yeah, shit. Yeah. The majority of Americans are sitting at home watching television. That's what I mean. Like Fox watching Bill O'Reilly and oh, he got fired, right? I think he's got his own shit now. But he got fired for sexual harassment. But watching all these people, but it, it's it's on both sides, brother. Because if you look at CNN or you look at this left wing shit, it's all confirmation bias and it's feeding you information to further dig you into your beliefs. And the same thing happens in the right and somewhere along the truth is where the tr- or the middle is where the truth lies. It is scary though. It's it is dis- it's a scary place to see where our country is going with all this. 
you know, stuff now. There's neo Nazis in Charlottesville. And They've been here. They're just awake. They're just being loud. No, no, but it's pretty scary to see. Yeah. It, to to there is a lot of um. There's a lot of angry people. Yeah. America's yeah. really angry right yeah. now, and and whether you're on the left or the right or the you're all equally the blue or the red the people though. The, the thing was annoying for me was like I shut off my Facebook right after that because it's it's so annoying to hear people complaining on Facebook and talking about. But it's like none of these people were out picketing. No, no one was out no. passing out voting flyers. No. no one was out telling people. Most to vote. of them didn't even vote. You know, all, most people yeah. didn't show up. That's what they said that the, the young vote was like the lowest. Because... I grew up in a household where if you didn't register to vote, you couldn't live there. Damn. You know, shit. that used to be a deal breaker for me and my yeah. girlfriend. Didn't no register shit. To vote. Yeah, I forgot to say that. <laughs> That's like the last Republican thing my father instilled in me before he died. He was like, God damn it. I don't vote. care if he used to say, like, you could be a faggot, you could date niggers, but you, you have to vote. And Jesus you, Christ. You can't pierce your nose. That was like his two <laughs> what crazy the fuck? things that my father. Really? Yeah, my dad was down with like anything. Except he didn't want me to pierce my nose and I had to register to vote. That's interesting. Rest your soul. Let's go to some current events. Look at this, bro. They're checking out. They're doing more and more science. And I I know a lot about this because what I have this somebody feeding picture? me this. Um, this is uh, it's how the gut bacteria is affecting people's anxiety. More and more studies have been showing up on how they do this on lab rats and stuff. But it's pretty well proven. Um, they did an, an, an extensive study on how it affects our moods. And that's why I'm telling when people live these sedentary lifestyles that they're not exercising, they're sitting behind a fucking desk all day and they're popping pop tarts and pizzas down their throat all day eating McDonald's. Mm -hmm. Your gut bacteria is going to multiply in your gut of a bunch of shit bacteria, and eventually that's what cravings come from. When you're sure. like, I want sugar, it's and, like sending and, you, that bacteria to the brain. Thousands of other diseases. Yeah. So it's and the same thing they did it with antibiotics as well, where they they saw the effects because antibiotics wipes out all your bacteria. Then you're mm -hmm. fucked because even the good bacteria that you need, that's why people are figuring out probiotics and all this shit. I don't know. Have you felt a change in your mental state when you changed your diet? Way more oh, yeah. Drastically? No, I, well, I, ha I drink hanging water, which is a high high alkalinity water. It's, I haven't looked into that enough. It's hydrogen rich. And basically, um, it's, it's the only machine out there that is um, licensed for medical use. It has titanium plates. It's uses, expensive, right? Yeah, it is. It is a couple couple G's for the machine. Yeah, take three G's or something like that. Three yeah, five. But um, it's the best water in the world, and basically what it does is it's it literally scrapes your intestines out. Damn. So so. Of you, the good shit too. Oh, oh no no oh no it it basically the guy who invented it um has done like three hundred thousand colonoscopies. Holy shit! And so basically Been they going look, up a lot they of people's asses. Large intestines. Uh, after a few months on hanging water, and basically, what happens with sickness in this bacteria is your intestines are, you know, these scrunchy, scrunchy yeah. pores. Yeah. It's like a big tube all smashed up. Yep. So that's what gluten people are becoming intolerant because it's stuck to each other. Your waste gets stuck in those crevices. Yep. And that's what causes these little um, polyps, and which can cause yeah. cancer and cause yeah. other diseases. So ulcers and leaky the, guts. The hanging water goes in these crevices and just scrapes all of the waste out. Interesting. Because of the hydrogen. Yeah, and it's it's has these tiny molecules. It's micro clustered water. It's I gotta really look into that shit. That's interesting. Um, Am I and, it, and it's supposed to really clean your your colon out. So uh, I I believe in that. I don't take antibiotics. Fuck no, I don't um, take none I don't of that drink, shit. I haven't drank soda in seven eight years. I worked there, bro. I know what they put in that shit. Um, I do it's like bad. a chocolate donut once in a while. You gotta fuck off every now and then, right? And have, have a um, cigarette, have a donut. Yeah, you gotta you gotta have you gotta have the good bacteria. Yeah. You know, so what well, are you I saying? I feel like it's good, to, it's, it's good to trick your system every now and then. Like, I eat good 99% of the time. Every now and then, I'll eat something bad, right? And then it's almost like keeping my system in check. Maybe that's not the best approach to take, but it's my bro science where I'm like... <laughs> well, you look great. Whatever you're doing is Thank working. Thank you, man. Yeah, yeah. You my, definitely my, my lost girl helps me a lot with this shit, too, and I got a personal trainer. You look way younger. Yeah, that's just crazy. You that's... look like we haven't done East Los. Yeah, no. <laughs> For real, bro. It's coming. <laughs> it's coming. Shit, man. I was looking pretty fucked up oh, the drinking was a lot of that bro drinking was uh there's a new documentary coming out i thought this was super fascinating for one of our current events it's called death dive to saturn it's the it's it's the there's a satellite bro they sent out in 1997 a fucking saturn to take pictures of it these crazy ass pictures and uh they have this documentary coming out of the whole process because it circled the planet quite a few times differently up until getting caught into the orbit and finally coming down taking photographs as it's coming down and eventually succumbing to the pressure of saturn because it's this crazy pressure i'm like i don't know bro i'm fascinated by by this shit i'll tell you my saturn story I was at sushi last week and there's this old dude 
in in um the neighborhood who has this big telescope. I was walking back to my car. He has this massive telescope. He's like, hey, check it out. I look. He has it aimed at Saturn. And it was the first time in my life I could see Saturn and I could see the rings totally clear. Holy shit. Through this little telescope. And he had it outside his house? Yeah, it was like this old dude. He has a little bucket. You you know, he put a buck in. Oh, nice. This massive telescope. But apparently three or four weeks ago, uh, whatever night of the week it was, Saturn was really, really visible. Oh, and it, it was, you know, it was small, but I could, you could see the rings around it. And you yeah. could see, it was like, holy shit, I could see Saturn. I'm looking right at it. it That's was a amazing. trip, man. Yeah. What a fucking trip. That's funny that we had it today. Yeah, I, I, because I've seen it out of the observatory here, but that's like a giant fucking no, building. No, you can see it. I mean, that was one of the plants for the, when they had the uh, eclipse last yeah, week. Yeah, yeah. You could see Saturn at the same time. Damn, that's a trip, bro. The space. Did you um, look at the eclipse? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, did you uh, have the glasses? No, I did it with my phone. I figured it out. How? I just pointed that shit at it and fucking kept tapping the screen, and eventually I could see it. I was like, oh, shit. Oh, really? I tried yeah. the phone. It was doing selfie. It was standing behind me, trying to get the fucking selfie, and it iPhone kept snapping. iPhone 6S Plus, bro. Not even yeah. the 7, 6S Plus. I'm on my Android still. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, I saw, I, I watched it live, too, on Facebook, like all this shit. Yeah, I watched it live, too, but my my uh, my roommate had the, the, the glasses, and I, I put them on the next day. I'm like, damn, these are perfect. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. The, people would talk shit about it. It's probably just because Chelsea was. You look right at the sun. It's yeah. perfect. I'm like, you're not supposed to stare at the sun. It'll fuck your eyes. Yeah, out. I was pissed. That it Did you see but... Donald Trump staring at the sun like a fucking idiot? <laughs> yeah. <I guess. laughs> Did you watch today? No, I didn't watch that. I watched today. That he, you know, he went to Texas. Oh God. What he didn't you? meet. Uh, people are bagging him. He didn't meet any of the victims. He didn't give any hugs. Fuck no. And he's he's like, sitting, get off me. He's like sitting Joel there. Austin. He's sitting there at the meeting talking to people just. You know, it's so annoying. Every single word out of his mouth is the best. We're great. We're great. Everything is great. Everything is great. I saw a guy breaking down his speech, and he said why he does that. And the, 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 the guy who created Dilbert, you know Dil, the Dilbert, the yeah. cartoon? That guy, he predicted him too, like way before. And he talks about how he does, like he has, I just says like big, 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 and greatly, and all these. Yeah, everything's all these, great. So everything's it's like, best. it's because great. a lot of people are so simple-minded, and to them, they're, they're you know, he puts <coughs> these visuals in their head, and they're totally. like, oh. Oh, okay, it's cool. great. Oh, it's great. Everything's it's great. Like, oh, okay, it's great. It's like everything's great. It's like, oh, uh, thousands of people are dying. We've never seen the storms. Yeah, it's great. Everyone's yeah. great. Anyway, the point is, I'm looking at this the feed from CNN or whatever. I was watching. I was like, damn, who's that hot ass fucking chick? And I was like, oh shit, that's his wife, Milani, right? <laughs> and she's sitting there. She's staring off, just looking at the lights. And everyone's talking to FEMA and all these people being displaced she's and like, diseases. Fuck this. And she's just spacing out. And she's wearing a baseball hat. <laughs> That says POTUS or FLOTUS. What? And it was oh. just so weird. It was just like First Lady of the United States. Yeah, and I'm like, who's that smoking hot chick in the media? I'm like, oh shit, that's Trump's wife. That's the first lady. And she's just space people are talking about, you know, insurance companies or talking she about had to bang she has she's had to bang him a few times, right? <coughs> they have a kid? They don't have a kid. Right? Do they have a kid? Yeah, they don't yeah, have a kid. Yeah, they have a bunch of kids. That's that's they them together? Kids. Oh shit, I didn't even know that. See, oh, that's Millennium Melania. Melania made? Yeah. Uh I don't think Ivanka and 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 Jared, oh, right? Not. The no, other no, of guys, course. they're are... way older. Ivanka's like in her... she's no, probably the same age as her. I like the my favorite meme from that is when they show like Ivanka and it's like when you want a sugar daddy but you end up the first lady. Yeah, <laughs> you're like <laughs> or something. man. I think um, I think I didn't think he was gonna win. He didn't think he was gonna win either. He's like fuck, I won. All anyway, right. it's just she was just spacing out and she's wearing this baseball hat that says Flotus, Flotus. and it's just like. I look. I think about all my friends. I have so many friends around the world, and I'm just like, God, it's so embarrassing. They're looking at you like, dude, what's going on over yeah, there, it's bro? It's so embarrassing. It's crazy. Anyway, you know, you hear the whole thing about Joe Olstein in Texas, talking about the cl- church. Clip- church was closed. He, he so he has this big fucking millionaire on TV. I know of Joe Olstein. My mom bought me a book of his. <laughs> so this guy, he's has this massive church, massive church, and he said it was closed due to flooding. It's in Texas. People went out there on social media like, what the fuck is this? So they got out there and they're videotaping and it's just, there's cones around it so nobody can go in there. Like this motherfucker doesn't want to offer shelter and he's a church like. So he's been catching all his shit and now he's putting it out like, oh, whoever wants to come, we have shelter. This, this, and it's like, this, the, tweet, I saw somebody, the tweet's been deleted since. I saw something today. What a dick, huh? Yeah. I'm not a fan of religion, organized religion. I'm not either. My mom got me this book about positivity or something. I start reading it, and like every other paragraph was this Bible reference. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. <laughs> and then I look, and it's Joel Osteen, and someone's like, oh, yeah, the guy's a big televangelist. And I was like, really? Mm. Red flag. Yeah. Check this out. I love this story. Burglars try to rob a woman in a wheelchair. 
She had a gun. Wow. They were breaking into her fucking house, and she's in her and she's in her crib, and she said that she can see them cutting through the screen door. She goes through the window and she points her gun. She's like, "Get the fuck out of here!" Oh <laughs> These my guys God. are like, "Oh shit!" Badass grandma. And they bounced out, and she's like, "Yo, man, like, what's been going on? I've been living here for twenty years." But she's like, uh, <laughs> "What did you say?" I looked at the door, and she said she saw she was a man right there, right outside, looking like he was going for my door. That's crazy, bro. My mom wow. did the same shit. She almost killed a guy because of that. Yeah, with, don't with commit machete. crime. Yeah, man. Don't commit crime. Where is that off the grid? This is off the grid news. This is uh. Wait, what city was she in? Tell you right now. It's, she's it's so. In... S- uh, where the fuck does she live? Two burglars. Uh, doesn't say. Huh? I guess. Well, it's supposed to be somewhere here Monday. Cause she says she, I never used to. Wonder where she was. Yeah. Well, <coughs> they ain't coming back to her crib. She's probably like, don't put my address out there. I don't want nobody else coming. Yeah. Uh, this is what I was talking about, bro. So beef burgers were being sold in Europe with twenty nine percent horse meat. Of horses that were being euthanized, they were being labeled as highest quality beef. So what they would do is they would get the highest quality beef and mix in this bullshit beef, which they do a lot of places. Yeah. Um, and they would uh, and they would label it as this high quality meat. Yeah, it's terrible. The food industry. Is, I guess I used to say in America, but I guess obviously it's everywhere now. Is is um, it's it's tough, man. That's why, dude. I don't have a problem with meat. I have a problem with the process. I keep saying that over and over. People are gonna be like, "Shut the fuck up." I get it. No, but, but it's I'm tough. Like, but it, the process is we're so disconnected. You know what I mean? We're so entrusting to like people to make good decisions for us. We're just lazy fucking people that don't want to do shit for ourselves. It's like I think the best thing you could do is read the package and know where you spend your money. You know, and learn how to read a package. Though people don't know how to read packages. You know, it's hard. Like when you look, you know, at, even people. The big thing is that. All these companies are funding each other. Like even vegetable oil is not good for you. It's vegetable actually vegetable oil. Yeah, let me so you're you still why. fucking with vegetable oil. That's what I'm saying. But no, I'm just saying like even and all canola oil, all these different canola shit. oil. That's what I'm saying. So these people, it's should I stop fucking with canola oil? Twenty years ago. Yeah, for real, I don't fuck with it either. But people, coconut oil, baby. All day, all day. So coconut oil is good for your skin. Good all for of cooking, that. drinking, it's, coffee. Where's youth came from, ooh, bro? MCT oil. Everything. Bomb. Hell yeah. But, you know, it has a low smoke point and it becomes carcinogenic once heated. What? So if you cook for it, these vegetable oils. Oh, vegetable oil. So they become, yeah, they become cancerous no when sure. you cook with them and people don't realize, like, oh, I'm just a vegetarian. It's like, yeah, you can drive your car with vegetable oil. Yeah. Fuck that. Don't drink that shit. Or don't eat that shit. I don't know. Um, it's, a t- it's tough, bro. Especially this is in Europe, bro. It was, it was, uh, it was distributed to the, all the major, all the major uh, food chains. Like, you know, they're I only mess with one red meat. And I get this. Uh, Trader Joe's has it. It's grass-fed... Um, Grass-fed steak from New Zealand. Nice. I get from Trader Joe's. Try a farmer's market, bro. There's a bunch of hunters out there that sell meat from like their own range and shit. It's pretty oh, tight. Oh, that's right, huh? Yeah, yeah. I go to the Studio City one every Sunday. I, I've been wanting to go to the... There's a great farmer's market right by my house. I live right in Whitley Heights down the street in Hollywood. And I, I just always forget on Sunday morning to go there. I go every Sunday. It's a cool I little ritual, that. bro. I go there. I get a coffee there. Organic, bomb ass. I'm a coffee snob. So I get some dope-ass coffee. Walk around, get my veggies, get all my shit, and call it a day. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. like. Yeah. Yeah. Buy local. Yeah. And then there's, you know, there's people there selling meat. There's people that. Highest quality shit. I never shit. thought about that. Totally right about that. Highest quality shit. Yeah, because all the vegetables are coming down from auction art. Yeah, bro. Places. It's, it's from. Like, I talk to these people who are like, oh, like, ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo están? They're little Mexicans and shit. I'm like, oh, what's up? I'm become friends with all of them. I'm like, what's up, y'all? They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got some of this. We got some of that. They hook me up. It's tight, man. So. So yeah, man, you got anything else you want to plug right now, man? Um, five pieces should be coming out soon. Five right? pieces coming out. Uh, just did another new show um, called Liberty Crossing. Nice. That's coming out um, next month. It'll be on Go Ninety, which is a new platform. Oh, beautiful! And then I have another show, um, a big show, which people aren't going to see here. It's really big in Europe called Chernobyl. Oh, okay, cool. Um, season I know, two. I know about Chernobyl very well. <clears throat> season two of Chernobyl, it's, it's a massive show in Europe, yeah, bro. Yeah, well, Chernobyl's a big topic out there. Like, it, people and people it's don't this, talk about it right here as much. Yeah, it's, it's this big show in Europe, and I shot about two weeks on it. It has, I mean, I'm assuming it has to do with all the Chernobyl shit. Yeah, it's, radioactive. It's, it's a bunch of, it's, it's a Russian show about these kids that go to Chernobyl, and they go back in time. Oh, shit, okay. Um, but it's a huge, huge show in Europe. And um, we shot a couple weeks out here, and we were shooting M4s and shooting that's in real tight. airplanes and driving cars, and it was badass. So that's coming. Where can people find your books, man? Uh, you can find my books on Amazon.com, uh, Robert Paul Taylor. Um, Just you look can, them up. I'm sure you can find them. Yeah, they'll pop up on there. Amazon. Um, you, 
you can watch the Bathroom Diaries. Dude, I love that series so fucking much. You can watch the you can it, the at? website is watchthebathroomdiaries.com. I loved it, bro. The first thing, oh, it's so warm. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. I'm I'm re re rewriting that into It was done really well, bro. Pilot, so we can try to get something off the ground with that. I, shit, you could I mean you already got all the shit there. Dude. Yeah. I love it. The, the, uh the, South 32 um was just leaked actually. It's available on YouTube now. Yeah. You can watch South 32. And um Or you can not pirate it. No, it's okay. I don't care. Fuck it. Yeah. And then uh <laughs> Yeah, man. What's, your, what's, what's your social media handle? At Street Fame Books? At Street Fame Books. That's my Twitter, Is my Is there any IG. underscores or anything? Nope. At Street Fame Books. At Street Fame Books. Episode IG. 35. Bam. Thanks for keeping it cool with me, brother. Thanks Thank for Thank you so me. much for being on, brother. Great to be here. Till next time. See you guys later. Cheers video.